Hey guys, I'm Tara Wellman, which you probably know by now, and this is Bird Seeds, which if you're watching this, you also probably know by now. But anyway, since the last time we talked, the Cardinals swept their way through Pittsburgh. And then got swept in a disappointing two-game series at home against the Astros. So there's that. But can I be completely honest with you here? I've had a really hard time caring <laughs> about baseball this week. My mind and my heart have been overwhelmed by sadness about this week. The events in Orlando and the reality check that it provided about how broken not only the system is, but how broken we are, and I just don't know what to do. I mean, when the Cardinals play bad baseball, I can always come up with one or two ways that I think they should fix it, but I can't fix this. I can't fix what happened, I can't fix angry people, I can't fix broken hearts. So I've just been just really sad. But the most profound thing about sports to me is their ability to momentarily transport us away from the horrors of real life like nothing else can. So I still want to talk about baseball, even if it's in a slightly less comedic fashion this week. Is that alright? So, like I said, the Cardinals looked great against the Pirates. The pitching is coming around, the offense continues to do its thing, Johnny Peralta looks like he hasn't missed a beat, and Matt Carpenter, still a boss at second base. Meanwhile in Memphis, former Cardinal second baseman Colton Wong has hit 417 with four home runs, a triple, four walks, and 11 RBI in just six games for the Redbirds. And that's great, but I mean, that's also what Colton Wong should be doing at AAA. The real story here is the fact that he's tested the waters in center field. Now, St. Louis Post-Dispatch writer Derek Gould actually asked the Cardinals brass about this very thing just days before Colton Wong trotted out to center field for the first time, and he was told, not gonna happen. However, despite the scoffing by everyone's favorite Twitter managers, it did happen. And honestly, I don't hate the idea of Colton in center field. Keep in mind, his arm strength, his speed, his athleticism, those were never the problems at second base. We've watched him make all kinds of rangy infield plays covering more ground than the average second baseman. If he can quickly acclimate to the space he'd have to cover in center field, and maybe if the other outfielders can step up and help direct traffic a little bit, because let's be real, Wong's probably not the guy I want calling the shots in center field just yet. It just might work. Randall Gritchick is in a downward spiral, the Jeremy Hazelbaker experience is pretty much over, and the infield is set. And with Colton Wong back on his way to St. Louis today, center field is a strong and not awful possibility. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I really don't mind it. Oh hey, I didn't even tell you who my guest is today. No, it's not Lance Lynn. I'm still counting on you to make that happen for me, internet. But it is my good friend Cole Claiborne, or as the Twitter folk know him, High Sox Sunday. So I have to ask you, first of all, how difficult has this season been watching the Cardinals without John Jay and his High Sox? <laughs> well, fortunately, <laughs> Greg Garcia uh, has kind of taken up that role. And Randall Gritchick, who actually uh, a couple seasons ago took a picture of himself and Dean Kikeffer and Greg Garcia wearing a shirt that I designed, uh, those guys have kind of taken up that role. Um, so really, though, the last few years, that the High Sox Sunday thing has kind of died down. The popularity is going less and less. I've noticed that. Which is unfortunate because everyone looks better in High Sox. Cardinals have cool socks, too. I mean, those are awesome. I don't know why you would want to sport those. Exactly. I completely agree. But for John Jay, the change of scenery worked. He can share the high socks elsewhere. Um, but I'll ask you this. What's your take on the Cardinals side of that trade, bringing Jed Jerko in, and what he has brought to the Cardinals so far this season? Well, he's kind of been, I guess, um, replaced somewhat by Led Mestias, and he hasn't gotten to play a ton this year. I mean, he's been a a good role player. It's nice to know that he's there, but I don't know that he's done much. I mean, he's certainly done more than Ty Wigington, but <laughs> he hasn't done a whole lot. I feel like he's been serviceable, but just kind of 
there. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of how I feel too. And I mean, you know, who who knows? Those kind of guys seem to come up randomly in the biggest moments. Like, you know, last year Brandon Moss um, kind of was the same way. Whenever they traded for him, and he actually, this is a nice trivia question. He actually got the last hit of the season for the Cardinals in the playoffs. Um, not that it really mattered because it was just a base hit, but you know, sometimes those kind of guys, like they'll just come up randomly and you'll realize, Oh, like that's why they were there. Like the year Jake Westbrook randomly got the win in game six of the world series. And who knows? I mean, there's half the season is still available for him to, to break out this year and do something. Maybe he'll get hot. Well, you mentioned Brandon Moss. That was another trade that a lot of people were not real high on <laughs> to begin with. I mean, Brandon Moss is never going to be a high average guy. He's, inevitably going to strike out in a pretty inopportune moment, it seems like. But he also this year is hitting a team leading 15 home runs so far, and he's not even playing every day. Yeah, and I think really almost more surprising than the trade was the fact that they brought him back this season. And um, I honestly think, uh, I guess the idea was that he might be able to play first base, and I think he's probably played more outfield than first base. But to have somebody like Moss come in there and provide that power even off the bench has been really huge. And his average was pretty bad for a while. It's kind of up to a more respectable level now. Um, but, I mean, if he hits those kind of power numbers, I, you almost got to roll him out there and find playing time for him because when he's hitting, he's doing damage. It's been interesting watching the dynamic of this roster, I think, because myself included, a lot of people kind of feel like this maybe isn't the the best roster the Cardinals have ever had. Not to say they don't have talent, but because it doesn't necessarily make sense. It's not a roster where there are eight guys that you're going to run out there every day that are your starters and then bench players. You've got a bunch of guys that fill different roles but are being asked to do different things than they've ever done before. Is the lack of consistency in maybe the roles these guys are asked to play a problem, or is it just something that they're going to have to get used to because that's how the roster is made up? Well, I mean, we, we've been clamoring for several years for the Cardinals to have a better bench, and this year I feel like, at least since Matheny's been the manager, this is probably the best bench that they've had. So, with that, you know, that obviously in the playoffs has its own scenario but during the season you've got to find ways to keep the guys sharp and it would be nice to have kind of a standard lineup but at the same time you don't want just nine guys that you can play you know you want to have 11 12 guys that you can count on and to keep counting on them you've got to find playing time the one area that i would like to see them switch out more of they aren't and that's at the catcher position (laughs) it worries me that somebody like yadier molina is playing every single night i think the hard part is convincing molina (laughs) That he yeah. needs more more time off. Um, one other thing that they have to figure out, and and probably pretty quickly, is what to do with Trevor Rosenthal. Um, when your closer is only good in save situations, and your team either scores all the runs or no runs, making safe situations pretty hard to come by, um, but your closer has a 10-plus ERA in non-save situations, you got to figure out what to do there. Is... Rosie kind of Mitchell Boggsing, or is this just all a weird anomaly and he's going to be fine? I don't think it's to the degree of Mitchell Boggsing quite yet. <laughs> At least I hope not, because he has been really good in safe situations. Um, the good thing, really, though, is that if for some reason he can't get the job done, Sung Wan Oh has proven to be as good a candidate as any. I mean, the Cardinals kind of have a similar situation to what the Yankees have, where the Yankees have two or three guys that are legitimate closers. And if anything happens to Rosie, I mean, honestly, I'm not worried. This is why we're friends, because my very next point was, let's talk about Sungwon Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But seriously, he's been phenomenal. He has a a 1.57 ERA on the year. And in the last seven games um, where he's pitched six and two thirds innings, he's given up zero runs. Um, he's striking people out at a 66% rate on the year. He's walked eight and struck out 47 in 34 and a third innings. I mean, we were all just hoping that this guy could transition to major league baseball. And now if there's an argument to be made for an, a middle reliever getting an all-star nod, he's clearly that guy. (laughs) Well, Dylan Batonsis has made the all-star team in that same role. And he really, honestly, when you compare Dylan Batonsis and Sung Wan Oh, I have Dylan Batonsis on my fantasy team. So really because he gets strikeouts at such a high rate, he doesn't even get saves, but he's so good as a reliever that 
he has value. And that's exactly what we're seeing from Sung Wan Oh. And I agree. I mean, there's a lot of times where middle relievers do get an all-star knot and his numbers are, are inarguable at this point. He's certainly given the Cardinals the flexibility in the late innings of the game that they haven't had in a while. I'm asking everyone the same thing. Um, I'm asking people what they actually like about the game of baseball because the Cardinals maybe aren't winning as much as we would like for them to be, but baseball still is fun. So what is it about baseball for you that keeps it entertaining, win or lose? You know, I think for me, it really, it just, it brings me back to my childhood. I mean, as cliche as that is, I mean, I think in my opinion, if I had it every, if I had it my own way, every kid that grows up in America would play baseball at least for a little bit because it is just such a quintessential American sport. Um, and every time I go to a game, even though I never played baseball at a high level, it's still it's just like there's something about being in a ballpark, hearing the crack of the bat. This sounds so hokey, I know. But it really just like I love the competitiveness. I love the strategy. Um, it's, it's a sport that I've really probably the only professional sport um, aside from maybe tennis, which I do play. But aside from, you know, it's probably the only professional sport that I've able to analyze and understand high level thinking that goes on. And I like that aspect of it. And whenever I get a chance to hear major leaguers talk about their career, like Don Mattingly is from Evansville where I'm from. And I've gotten a chance to talk to him a number of times and just hear his stories about baseball and hear what he has to say. And just, I don't know that camaraderie and there's just something about the aura of it that, that literally draws me in. And that's why we come back year after year, no matter how frustrating the Cardinals are. Cole, I'll let you get back to what you were doing today, but thanks for hanging out a little bit. We should do this again sometime. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Make sure you're following Cole on Twitter and leave a comment below and tell me which player you think wears the high socks best. Now for my weekly reminder of baseball's greatness. If my biggest baseball pet peeve is a popped up bunt, which it is, my favorite defensive play is the classic strike em out, throw em out, double play. I mean, does anything get a crowd back into an inning and shift the momentum more instantly than that? It, like baseball, is a beautiful thing. Thanks for watching this week. Be nice to people. And I'll see you next time on Bird Seeds. <laughs>